I'm Rob Lacuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby here with two-time Emmy nominee Maisie Williams from The New Look. Maisie, when Catherine Dior was once asked about her experiences during World War II, her response was simply love life. What does that tell us about who she was? Um, I feel like we can read so much into that. I just always thought it was interesting how she never kind of spoke about the horrific things that she saw um and I feel like uh to speak these things into existence or or to speak about these things after the fact it's almost like keeping a little bit of an evil present within the world and I feel like in order for her to survive like she really had to go within um and uh leave a lot of this pain behind and so I think it just shows someone who's like incredibly mentally resilient um and uh someone who ultimately wanted to turn the pains of her life into something good yeah that makes so much sense and I, I know a few people who are kind of like that who just want to rise above the traumas of the past and just try to focus mm -hmm. on positive that's a really good way to be particularly what she went through which brings me to this like I'm kind of surprised or maybe I'm not that we don't know enough, of, we didn't know enough about her. And when you embark on the new look, well, I was thinking this is just going to be a really fun story about, you know, Chanel versus Dior and great, but there's so much that goes on with your character that is mm -hmm. so grounded um, in so many different emotions. So I'm curious, how did you feel about how the series affords her the prominence that she really deserves? Yeah, I mean, I was absolutely thrilled. When I signed on to the project, I'd only read the pilot. And so I had no idea how much of her story they were going to be able to tell. Um, but it is just so, it's so important that women like this are not forgotten from history. Um, but it's also so important to like, for our storytellers and our filmmakers to um properly if if we're going to look at Dior being a, a Catherine Dior being like one of the original muses of the fashion house um you really have to understand like how it is that she inspired Christian and and in order to do that you have to really understand her life um because it's not quite as simple as the muses that we know today where it's an image or a look or an attitude um with something just like really fundamental about who she was and who she was to Dior and how um, inspired by her he was and in order to communicate that to the audience it meant that we got to tell a lot of her story really accurately and I feel just really grateful um, that more people are going to learn about her because she's not someone that we think about when we think of like the history of fashion and she wasn't someone who was particularly glamorous or fashionable um, but her essence and um, her femininity and her um, the way she conducted herself in life that was who Miss Dior was supposed to be um, yeah. and I think it's just a beautiful message. Absolutely totally agree um, and I, I, mean, I admit I didn't know anything about her at all in fact I didn't really even know she existed which is really sad it just means because I don't know we can't know everything so it's really nice that I now know who she was from the perspective of the, of the people who created this show including yourself but mm. yeah, so I was then thinking this, is there an added pressure to be authentic when you're portraying a real life person or it does not really matter, you're still trying to find the essence of who this person was or is? Yeah, I think like in terms of um, assuming Catherine's, you know, persona or voice, like I did very, very little work. There's very little um out there of like the real Catherine for, for me to sort of drink in so it was more um just trying to identify with um the extremes that a person will go through for, for what they believe is right and I think that you know we look back on these atrocities in history um and we all like to think that we would be like Catherine but you know the truth is like the French resistance were like not even one percent of France and so you know, it took a lot for people to, um, yeah, to, to to work for the resistance. And so I feel like I really had to dig within myself and find um, a way to connect with 
acts that are as selfless as that. And I don't know that that it's even a capacity that I have, but yeah. as an actor, like you just try and get as close as you can. And I feel, I feel like I was just really trying to drink in her life. Um, and, and maybe, you know, there are parts that I try to relate to my own experience, but for the vast majority that I couldn't relate to my own experience, I really just felt like I was trying to listen to her experience and, um, just bring that like to the forefront. And yeah, there's like a pressure in that because I, you want to do her life and her story justice. And, you know, for us, these things are like story beats and, you know, character arcs, but this was, yeah. you know, a real woman who who went through this. Um, and I just felt like the dedication to her in every capacity was what made me feel um, uh, like able to do the work. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. But then when you're and you're kind of filling in all the blanks and you kind of create this human being or, or recreate. She's a survivor. She's a fighter. She's the muse. But was there anything in particular when you really embarked on this during pre-production and then during shooting where you were really quite surprised about who she was? Um, I think what we really wanted to draw out was just like, uh, what we really wanted to draw out was like her relationship with Christian and so in lots of ways she was like perhaps like a bit more of a leader or a figure in that household and so yeah I think like finding that dynamic with Ben in a story about Dior you know I think that was like definitely an interesting part to play in Catherine just like how how influential she is over Dior um um, but like kind of how unaware she is, but like, you know, you kind of see it from Dior's, from Christian's perspective of like, you know, how much he cares for his sister and will yeah. do anything for her. Um, so I think like, you know, finding that balance. And then, I mean, one of the things that I loved about her the first time I was reading about her was that she returned to the land to plant the roses for perfumeries across France. Like she spent the rest of her life doing that something so symbolic about a woman returning to the earth like after you know the torture and the starvation and the struggle of like Ravensbrook mm. um yeah just like what would you do what like what would you do and I just think there was I really could like connect with this feeling of just wanting to return to the earth and be alone to think and contemplate and and create something beautiful from from nothing. Yeah, it's so true because you, you put yourself in that in those shoes. If you, you know anyone with empathy is looking at Catherine's journey and thinking, what if what if that was me? If it was me, I would just crawl up into the fetal position and would never move again. That would be me. <laughs> I don't know about you, but it's like it really it's so inspiring to watch a really strong person's journey, whether you're a woman or a man. Um, did, did you find her journey inspiring at all in terms of your own life, even though you're so different, obviously, different time periods, but mm. was there something about her where you thought, yeah, I really love that and I want to kind of follow that? I mean, like, only in ways that, like, you know, I wish I was more so. I yeah. think that she is, um, she plays a very, like, heroic role within this show, but I think she wouldn't see herself as particularly brave or strong or heroic. I think that there was like a fundamental part of herself that couldn't sleep at night unless um, she fought for what she believed in. And yeah, I, I, I feel like I, there, there are, you know, parts to like injustices in life that I want to make right and I want to fight for. But, you know, and I'd love to paint an image of myself as being on the correct side of history. Yeah. But when I research someone like this, you know, you realise that they are few and far between, um, you know, in the 
the history books um and it's because it was a really really scary dangerous time and it was far easier for people to just sort of cower and ignore and deny versus fight um yeah yeah totally um i've heard from actors in the past when they're playing someone who is going through trauma or who is being who is who's who is inflicting it that sometimes your body doesn't actually realize that it's not real. And so you go home at night and it's sometimes difficult to brush that away. Did you ever have that when you were playing, particularly the more harrowing scenes? Um, yeah, well, I guess sort of. I I really sort of prepared my life uh, before going into the show because I, I didn't want to have to shrug it off every night. I kind of felt excited by the prospects of like, you know, not shrugging it off for like eight months and like, you know, what what would that do kind of thing. And so I just, you know, sent a bit of a warning to a lot of my closest friends and family and just said like, I'm going to be doing this job and I'm going to be okay, but I'm going to be like missing for a little while and just want to, you know, focus on that. And so actually it, it kind of meant that I think a lot of that that baggage can just be really, really damaging to your relationships because it's like carrying the weight of someone else's life and and that really can negatively impact your life but you know I it was just me in my apartment all day or yeah. I was on set playing Catherine and so I didn't feel like I was like negatively impacting anyone um and and I wasn't negatively impacting myself I think I just I think um I do a lot of meditation um and I find that keeping my own mind in check means that when I you know work with this much focus I don't jeopardize my own mental health it just kind of becomes like a experiment in some kind of capacity um yeah yeah, versus like digging up volatile emotions that uh, yeah that I can't make sense of that's right and then they're going to send you off into the deep end which we don't want we don't want that um no what surprised me as well about this story um, is that with all the big names, big personalities, she was so grounded, so sympathetic. And a lot of that, honestly, is the, because of the way you approached her. There's so much nonverbal stuff that you're doing, very nuanced facial expression, body language. And it made me feel connected to her in some way. I'm curious how difficult that is as an actor, performer, to not really rely on dialogue and just rely on your reaction or your feeling like that can't be easy to just conjure up oh to be honest with you I can't like that is actually my favorite acting to do I hate dialogue I butcher dialogue all the time I there's part of me like I never trained in the way that like a lot of actors have and and I I I have this thing which is like completely in my own head but I just like have this this thing that like because I didn't train I'm not a real actor I don't actually know how to speak I don't know how to project my voice I don't know how to say dialogue well like and and I think I'm just like hard on myself mostly but but it's my dream to do a scene where I don't have to say anything (laughs) that's my favorite thing I, I find acting that way to be like uh yeah just more my thing everyone's got their thing you know yeah but I guess for, for me, um, acting without words is my thing. And I, yeah, just because you just find yourself thinking, you know, thinking, thinking, thinking. And when I'm speaking and saying dialogue, I'm like thinking about how I sound. And then I can't keep up the thoughts of the character in the same way. And I'll get that one day, I'm sure. But yeah, it's, my, <laughs> it's like my favorite thing. <laughs> it's a journey that you're on it's as a journey. performer. But no, mm. oh, yeah, you're really good at that. You're very, very good at that. And uh, and that's why I wanted to kind of give you that shout out because I think that was Great. some of your strongest work is really where you're saying nothing at all. And I'm just like so invested in your eyes and what you're actually trying to portray. So well done. Um, Thank you. So you're working alongside someone like Ben Mendelsohn, who is also a really interesting actor. He's, yeah, he's, there's so much that we could say about him, but what about you, given that you put so much time with him, what did you most value about that collaboration? I think that Ben has this amazing uh, 
uh, selflessness when he acts. I think that he's very sensitive to the way that the scene flows like across the board. He's he he's not about his close up and like the big shot of the day. Like every single take from every single angle, we want to be making something that feels alive and real and fresh and different and exciting. And he would like throw out all of these different line readings and like like trying to keep up with him. Like he's just really an unbelievable actor. And I feel like I was saying this the whole job. I was like, I didn't know anything about acting until I wrote with Ben. I didn't know anything about any of it. And now I feel like I get it. And then like we did do a scene and I'd like be bombing kind of. And I'm like, God, I really want to, I don't know. It's just like amazing to have that experience with another actor. Like he's so, he's so good, but he makes other people better like by being good rather than it, it's not it's not you know it's not like the Ben show it's no yeah it's really a collaboration and he would feed me these like really awful like lines before we'd call action or you know like backstory and parts of you know things that my character like would not want to hear or or you know, whatever he just would like feed me things right before we go for a take and I would just oh he changed lines of dialogue like when it's my close up and like and and he'd say something that's so soul crushing and then I'm just like but like he's just amazing he's amazing amazing wow. actor that sounds like yeah. a lot of fun actually uh, it was such a great experience um yeah final question gold derby obviously we are obsessed about awards and so we'd really we remiss if we didn't ask you about your game of thrones experience um mm. firstly do you ever get sick of people on the street like oh my god it's Arya Stark like you're never gonna live no. that ever <laughs> no and I wouldn't want to I'm so unbelievably proud to be a part of something that not only means a lot to people um but like it was just you know viewed was just so widely successful I will never get bored of it it's people are so lovely they're so kind they're so gracious they just like everyone's got the most amazing stories and reasons why the show like means a lot to them and the people that they watched it with and you know it was a special thing and and I think it, it used to find it quite overwhelming but now I just I just have so much time for for the people that have like you know given me this life effectively yeah, I can imagine. I, I I look forward to the day when you're like a little old lady and people are still going to mm. be saying, oh, God, there's Arya Stark. But um, <laughs> yeah. that'd be cool. That'd be fun. I mean, I'll probably be gone by then. But anyway, um, there's <laughs> two Emmy nominations, one in 2016 for season six, which was so, we were so thrilled for you because it's not easy to get nominated these days. There's so much amazing content and so many great performances. Then you got nominated again for season eight in the final season. I happened to be in the room that night when Game of Thrones won pretty much everything. And yeah. I'm just wondering, if we go back in time, can you remember what's it like to hear your name called on the morning of the nominations announcement? We was Is it just something that you'll never forget or was it just not a big deal? Yeah, I mean, so I was not watching the <laughs> the announcement uh but I got I, I found out on Twitter like someone like I got tweeted by the Emmys being like congratulations Maisie Williams on your nomination and I was like what <laughs> I could not believe it it's so surreal it's so amazing but just like such a yeah such a surreal part of it um and truly, like, the night of the Emmys is just, like, a real out-of-body experience. Like, it's just um, so exciting, so special. Uh, but, yeah, it will never get old. It's just, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm such a big fan of actors. Like, I love actors. I think that they're amazing. And so then when your name sits alongside people that you've idolised, like, forever, it's just, it's, yeah crazy and just like so exciting I just sometimes have these moments where I'm like you know this like life is so beautiful but like what what's next you know like I'm gonna get surprised again you know which is cool exactly let's hope we'll see what happens but in the meantime Maisie congrats on some really beautiful work in the new look and thank you for your time today thank you it's so lovely to chat with you 